So we're on day 24 and I'm starting to feel guilty now because I'm getting more feedback from quite a few of you uh, appreciating the daily vlogs that I did. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty hesitant about them for a while. And you know, some of you might not like them now that you've got towards the end when things start to slow down who knows i don't know but i want to say thank you to all of you that have been subscribing and you know enjoying the content um, i'm really happy that i've been able to to help a lot of you into the maritime industry and figure out what you know is hard to find out because this information is it's out there but when you don't know about it it's hard to find and it's hard to know where to look for it as well so i'm happy to help and thank you for all the support and you know thanks for the thanks so let me catch you up i don't remember i haven't been on on top of the videos lately and that's why i'm feeling guilty because you guys are appreciating guys and gals you guys and gals are appreciating the daily vlogs that i did over a year ago and now I'm slacking off I'm not making them daily as much anymore but that's just because of this constant flow schedule that I'm on you know these days are really really mixing together I'm already on day 24 I'm nearly a month into it this supposedly is only supposed to be a 50 day trip most likely hopefully a 60 day trip but I'm like halfway through and it's just it's flying by because of how I, I don't want to use the word chaotic but how non-stop this schedule is I um, completely lose track of days I barely know what actual day of the week is just because of how my sleep schedule is um so to catch you up you know we were we were pulling into anchorage two days ago and we were just you know rocking and rolling and at first i tried to go to sleep in my bed just because it's it's nicer and i tried for nearly an hour to fall asleep but i just kept getting tossed you know we'd, we'd hit a it kind of smoothed out and then all of a sudden we'd get jerked and hit a big roll and I just couldn't fall asleep. It was like an hour of trying to fight it. Hour maybe actually probably close to like two hours because it was it wasn't until about 11 o'clock I decided to sit in the recliner which holds me in a little better uh, from the rolls. So I sat in the recliner and by that time, you know, 11 o'clock, getting close to midnight, I gotta wake up at 3 a.m. for watch. I mean, I just was kind of just in and out, couldn't quite fall asleep, and then went to watch. We got the pilot. I steered, I steered into across the shoal and up into the Anchorage port. You know, on little, little sleep. But I steered up, steered us into the dock, and I actually did, I want to get some clips of me steering. You know, I okayed it with the, the captain and everything, but <laughs> Alaska sunrise isn't until like 10 a.m. So it's completely dark on the bridge. There's no recording in the dark. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we pulled in, I think we were on the dock by 8.15. So I got off the helm at 8.15, went down and helped the guys finish up the mooring operations. I was done by nine o'clock. So that was my first hour of overtime for yesterday. And then I came up in here in my room. I think I talked to Charmaine for a little bit, tried to squeeze in some time because like I've said, the Wi-Fi on the ship, I can't make calls. I can't make, the only thing I can even do is text her. So 
I try to squeeze in calls whenever I can. And so I called her, talked to her for maybe two hours, and then I think I ended up taking a nap between like 11.30, and I wasn't supposed to work until 3.45, but I got called up at 2.20 because one of the other watchstanders was gonna be going into the red in his STCWs. His his work rest hours were jacked up because of when we pulled in this morning. So they actually called me down to cover his last hour of watch, which I'm cool with because that is just another hour of overtime for the day. And you know, these, these days where we get into port, it's kind of, I don't get to work my normal four hours because they want me to save them to use for docking and undocking and you know, if anything happens. So getting in that hour in the morning, cool. Getting in that extra hour covering the dude's watch, even better. Uh, but that means I stood for five hours on the gangway. I got off at eight. Originally, we were supposed to set sail again at 2100 or 9 p.m. and that got changed to like 22 and then I think you know I got off at 8 I talked to Charmaine I was calling her back and forth trying to you know get some good service and talk to her before I, uh, I took another nap because I knew I was gonna get I was thinking they get to, we'd be pulling out by like midnight well, they called me at 2230 for 2300. So they thought we'd get out at 11 p.m. at night. So they called me out, come out at 11. They're still loading up containers. And I wanna say, I don't know, like 1130 or something, they had a mishap. They went to pick up one of the uh, container, it's more like a, a flatbed container, not a full container. It's just like a flatbed that they could sit on the back of uh, semi trucks. But it had, you know, huge generators on it. And instead of using like the usual container lift, there's like a attachment that the container. What are, what's it called? I don't know. The lift that hooks into the containers. There's an attachment that hooks in to that, and then that will pick up flatbed type uh, shipping loading thing I don't know what they're called but anyways there's four locks that go into it and typically you know they move fast so when they do a container the normal the spreader that's what it's called the spreader will lock all four points on a container and as soon as it starts to lift that truck that was carrying it starts to take off well, the spreader was on the attachment to lift the flatbed with the two generators on it. And the adapter only locked into three points of the flatbed. So when it started to lift, it, it started to tilt. And right at that moment, the truck driver started to pull away. And, you know, horns start blasting, you know, almost a, a mishap. And so basically everything got held up for nearly 45 minutes while I tried to set it back down and make sure everything was, you know, secure and safe to still lift. So then by around midnight, they finally got done loading up and took up the gangway, pulled in the lines, and I was off by 1 a.m. I came up, showered, in bed by 1.30. I pretty much passed out right away. But I had, you know, I woke up, I passed out right away, but I did wake up like once or twice. And then I was up fully by 3 a.m. for my watch at 3.45 again. So, I hope that you followed along with all that. It, it happens, this all happens really, really fluent. Is that the word I'm looking for? It's a very fluent schedule uh, to 
just non-stop so oh that's what I'm missing out so the morning that I came out yesterday to steer over the shoal we didn't have a pilot boat come up to us we actually had the pilot land by helicopter that was a new experience for me I got to I tried to take a video but you're not gonna see nothing you just see the red light and the searchlight of the helicopter everything else is just black in the video but in person I was actually you know visually able to see it and it was pretty cool the helicopter came in you know floodlights came on and it just hovered down and landed on the back helo deck there's a, a helo deck on this ship so it landed on the back helo helo deck for a little bit and the pilot got off the helicopter and then the helicopter lifted back up and I started walking back up to the bridge and it fly right by the bridge wing to take off pretty cool you know I was only not even 50 50 yards from it less than 50 yards as it took off and went off so that was a cool experience I've never had a pilot get on board by helicopter before. So, yeah, back to now we're currently at. We've left Anchorage. I went out to watch this morning. I just got off watch. I'm going to try and catch my rest period and take a nap for at least four or five hours. And we should be pulling into Kodiak sometime this evening and it should be a short unload and load. I think they're saying roughly six hours instead of the usual 12 to 18 that we, you know, we were in Anchorage for. It should only be about six hours, give or take, and then we'll be back to Tacoma. So, being that we're only gonna be in for six hours, we're gonna get in. I believe I'll be steering us into the dock and then sometime at midnight, 1 a.m. again. Yeah. Excuse me, we're gonna be leaving Kodiak. So I have to get my rest period in right now. I, got, I gotta get a few hours of sleep in because I'm gonna do my watch four to eight tonight and probably only have a two hour window to maybe take a nap before we undock and then have another two hour window before my bridge watch again lots going on lots happening i hope you enjoyed this video again thank you all for becoming subscribers thank you to my patrons for becoming patreons uh it means a lot so hit that subscribe button like comment share and i'll see you in the next one